Now, the people that don't swear, I find myself uncomfortable around. Yes. People that don't curse, you don't trust. No, it's not that I don't trust them. I just feel uncomfortable. You don't want to hang around with them. No, I really don't, because it's going to come out, and I don't mean it. They're anal. Don't say anal. It's not even on the list. Didn't even make the list of me the one. You say anal over and over again. Anal, anal, anal leakage, anal slippage, anal, anal, I don't like walk into like somebody's baptism and start going, you mother let's get this thing underway. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I have a sense of appropriateness in my life, believe it or not, occasionally. So I, I can control myself, but that's the thing. I can control myself. I can control myself. I don't need anybody else controlling me. Since swearing is something we hear almost everywhere we go. Well, at least you're beginning to have some insight into your problem. I wanted to find out why some people get so offended by these words. I'd like to call this meeting to order of the 40th Annual Convention of the National Association of the Holy Name Society. The Holy Name Society has been on the front lines against swearing since the 15th century. I met up with them the day they were signing a new swearing resolution. In honor of his divine name, I pledge myself against perjury, blasphemy, profanity, and obscene speech. We are here to uh, do a series of short vignettes showing how a person should appropriately correct someone else who uses obscene language. Welcome home, Susan. How was your date? He was all over me. He wanted to take me to bed and curse my brains out. You know how much I love you. You're not supposed to say those words. Unnecessary roughness, it's cursing football. You need roughness in football. What the cursing is wrong with you? Cool down, cool down. What's the big deal? The guys are human. Curse it to Hades. This foreman doesn't know what he's doing. He's a cursing illegitimate. If she keeps up with this blank blank, she's not gonna get anything from me. Listen, I know you're upset. There's no need for that language. You're only gonna make it worse. I agree with you. She should blank blank not do that. <laughs> Very good, guys. Well, thank you guys for having me here today. Um, if I could ask you, what is it about swear words you guys find offensive? Yeah, yes, sir. It's a question of love. Vulgar words corrupt the society. So you're not gonna misuse the name of God mm -hmm. or the Holy Trinity or the Lord Jesus. And blasphemy is just a rejection of love. Mm -hmm. You love someone, you, you, you don't misuse their name. You use it always with respect and love. Because you yeah. never slipped in unintentionally. I, actually, in my lifetime, I haven't. I have. I hate to say it, but I know because it might sound awful vain, right. but I just never have. You know? Okay. Well, listen, John, <laughs> the only thing I'm afraid of is it's all been collecting up, and one day it's all going <laughs> to stop <laughs> right <laughs> Thanks, John. Okay. Thank you for helping me out. I don't believe him. <laughs> I don't believe him. If the Holy Name Society was the old guard of anti-swearing... Why don't you look ahead? Ah, uh, don't preach at me. It made me wonder if there was a new guard. Well, my name is BK Hatch, and I'm the founder of the No Cussing Club. If you want to hang with us, I don't want to hear cuss. Don't cuss. Don't cuss. The No Cussing Club is a group that I put together at first with five of my friends. We started a website, nocussing.com, where we got people from all over the world signing up, taking the No Cussing Challenge. Words have a lot of power, and so you really need to be careful what you say to people. They obviously don't allow certain words on the TV for a reason because these words offend people and they don't make people feel comfortable. I think there's a lot of people that say they want cussing to stop and that it's a problem, but I think that something that separates me from them is that I actually go out there and do something. Like, I've, I speak to schools about cussing. What I like to see in the future is people uh, thinking twice before swearing or using cuss words and uplifting people instead of tearing people down. I know this is uh, my mission on the earth and something that's important to me and uh, to all my members, and this is something that I had to keep moving forward with. Next time you sign your foot in the door And don't know what to say anymore You say sex mask, break a breath One second, take a back, second, dash, forward, dash Give a shot of drink, got your brain tongue holding Take a breath and count to ten If I don't want to say a bad word, and, and you know, often you don't, I'll say freaking or fracking. I sometimes say dag nabbit. You know, shoot, darn. Aw, oh, carrots. <laughs> <laughs> I just say bad word, bad word, bad word. You think go hug yourself. I try not to cuss when there's like certain people around, like 
say my grandma or like little tiny kids. I wouldn't swear in front of my like uncle who's very like conservative Christian and his kids. The word damn means to inflict loss or to condemn to a very bad place. When we say damn, it literally means condemning God. In Catholic school, it means 10 Hail Marys in detention. The phrase is blasphemy in its purest form. It's been outlawed by churches and governments since Commandment 3, Thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. That didn't stop Joan of Arc from calling English soldiers les godams during the Hundred Year War. Like a good swear, the phrase became detached from its literal meaning over time. It's now used as a light expletive to express anger, pain, happiness, traffic, and the New York Mets. In the Jewish tradition, blasphemy was literally insulting God by taking God's name in vain. And uh, the people of Israel saw themselves having a covenanted special relationship with this God. But a covenant relationship is a conditional relationship. If you follow and do what I ask you to do, I will bless you. But if you break these laws, then not only you as an individual will suffer, but the entire people will suffer. Well, blasphemy is specifically words that do something bad to the divine. There are many medieval sermons that strongly inveigh against any kind of blasphemous talk. And they would try to make their depictions of the effects of that as visceral as possible. There's a whole tradition of stories where someone is habitually swearing by God's body and then the person will have a vision and picture Mary holding the baby Jesus, but the baby Jesus is all bloody and wounded. And the reason that's happened is because the person's been swearing and, and there's been these material effects on the body of Christ. Thomas Aquinas in the 13th century made an important distinction between blasphemy and profanity. Blasphemy really was to assault the truth of religion. Profanity was something less. That was using sacred language in a non-sacred use. In the 19th century, there arose a new set of taboos. The idea was that you were not supposed to refer not only to God's name in vain, but also to excretory and sexual features and processes. Let's remember that a lot of who we are as Americans developed within the Victorian age, which was beyond polite. We not only put long skirts on the legs of our women, we put long skirts on the legs of our furniture for fear that a bare naked chair leg might lead us to think sexual thoughts. The Victorians were concerned with controlling action, and the way to control action was by controlling thought, and the way to control thought was by controlling words. If it was a word that would elicit the baser desires, the fear was that it would unleash instinct, and it would overcome conscience, and the young man especially would act badly. Ever wonder how the terms white meat and dark meat got coined? Hello. Yes, can I have two breasts, please? <laughs> two breasts? <laughs> yes, and also two legs. Oh, two legs too. Oh, and also two juicy thighs. Say that again? The Victorians knew that words describing body parts would lead us down a path to moral ruin. It was best just to not say them. Uh, um, give me that order once more, please. Two breasts, two legs, and two juicy thighs. <clears throat> um, one more time, please. But, but slower. White meat and dark meat, all thanks to the Victorians, who simply couldn't handle words like thigh. I just get a kick out of using old-fashioned curse substitutes like, you know, good night nurse and, you know, uh, son of a bee sting and, and stuff like that just makes me laugh because it's so unnecessarily proper. I mean, in a world where, you know, what is it, two billion people don't have access to clean water and we're talking about, we're worried about saying the word shit. Like, really? That's what you're focused on? I think putting the parental advisory sticker on records was one of the best things they could do for record sales. Yeah, yeah. like if we put, like, kids can't have broccoli, people be smoking broccoli. <laughs>